Namaste, and welcome to our continuing series on Savitri with our beloved Ranga. We are on page 17, beginning with the line, A Signer of the Ordeal and the Path. A signer of the ordeal and the path who chooses in this holocaust of the soul death, fall, and sorrow as the spirit's goads. The dubious godhead with his torch of pain lit up the chasm of the unfinished world and called her to fill with her vast self the abyss. August and pitiless in his calm outlook, heightening the eternal's dreadful strategy, he measured the difficulty with the might and dug more deep the gulf that all must cross. Assailing her divinest elements, he made her heart kin to the striving human heart and forced her strength to its appointed road. For this she had accepted mortal breath, to wrestle with the shadow she had come, and must confront the riddle of man's birth and life's brief struggle in dumb matter's night. Whether to bear with ignorance and death or hew the ways of immortality, to win or lose the godlike game for man, was her soul's issue thrown with destiny's dice, but not to submit and suffer was she born, to lead, to deliver was her glorious part. This is the canto where the issue, the whole, the subject of the poem and what Savitri has to achieve and what she has come down for in the world, physical world, what she has to do, what is her work. That's what is being discussed here. In the, Sremda has taken the uh, episode from the Mahabharata of Savitri and there it's a tale of conjugal love. But Sri Ramadha has turned it into a spiritual um, symbol of the conquest of death. Because here also Savitri in Mahabharata, because of her purity and her devotion to her husband, she is capable of even fighting with death and reclaiming Satyavan as her husband and comes back upon earth. And they get a thousand children. The thousand children is... Um, it's a symbolic thing that there is success. So that's what is meant. <clears throat> the children in the um, in the Vedas symbolic of the results of your own what you have done in the what your own deeds. The children are the results of your karma. What you have done, they are the children. It reminds you of uh, Wordsworth. The child is father of the man. Yes. So, there is a, something like that. So, this is the, the theme that we are going to discuss. And now, death also is there. She has confronted death. And there is love also born in her. Cupid has shot his shaft. And she is now in love. She is divine. But she is descended into the physical world as a human being. So, this is the description of her as well as the first part, the Yama, the death. So, a signer of the ordeal and the path who chooses in this holocaust of the soul death, fall and sorrow as the spirit's goads. The dubious Godhead with his torch of pain lit up the chasm of the unfinished world and called her to fill with her vast self the abyss. So, 
so this is the a full sentence for so many lines so assigner of the ordeal and the path so who is it the death and it is death who chooses in this holocaust of the soul the soul has descended from its heights of divinity down into the inconscient of matter so this is the human soul and that's a holocaust because it's a huge destruction <coughs> you have lost your consciousness you have lost your uh, ananda you have lost everything that you had you have come down here it's a, a sacrificial holocaust okay and it is death who arranges uh, who assigns the ordeal and the path so the path and the ordeal it's an ordeal the challenge of conquering death and getting um conquering all your difficulties and rising again back into the divinity that's the ordeal that you have to face <laughs> death who chooses what does he choose he chooses fall he chooses sorrow as the spirits goads so we need not think that fall and sorrow are something negative it is god's goads it is in it is encouraging you to conquer the fall and go up it's a goad like you uh, encourage an elephant with a, a goad or even an animal you push them or the goat herd yeah that's right goading the goats yeah. in a particular <laughs> way or all cattle where it be a, uh, you take a, a a pretty sharp instrument and mm-hmm. <laughs> sometimes so that's a good so your sorrow and fall are the spirit's good later on also he will explain to you how pain is the hammer of the gods who is actually helping you to conquer the difficulty that you are facing the dubious godhead so all these are referring to yama assigner death the dubious godhead why the dubious because he is a godhead and yet he is the he's, lord of is taking your life <laughs> yes <laughs> okay he is he is the one who establishes death as the principle in life okay so the dubious godhead with his torch of pain it's a torch of pain lit up the chasm of the unfinished world so which is the unfinished world it's a world it's a uh, as they say in uh, economics a work in progress it is not yet finished completely it is on the way so what would be the finished world divinization of matter so now it is unfinished so this is the half way you have come to the journey that's what i mean by unfinished world and called her now without saying who it is he is saying her but there is nobody else except savitri and death so her is the death uh, is savitri and called her to fill with her vast self the abyss so the abyss has to be the abyss is the inconscient the physical world and she has to completely change and how can she change by filling her vastness here <laughs> transformation it's a poetic way of saying mm. transformation of the matter i wanted to ask you um if i could just add one thing when you say that it is the story of the conquest of love over death i would like to add and the establishment of a life divine on earth <laughs> <laughs> yes that's all <the> purpose <laughs> in fact that's the issue <laughs> that's the issue that's the issue yes. the, we come to that little later on okay so so and called her to fill with her vast self the abyss now but This is a description of the of the of Yama, God, and the uh, death as a god, august and pitiless in his calm outlook. So he is a god. He has a calm outlook. There is no variation. Okay, a uh, calm outlook, pitiless. There is no pity. Heightening the eternal's dreadful strategy. What is this? Heightening the eternal's dreadful strategy. the strategy of the divine is to divinize the matter but it is dreadful it is starting from absolutely the death and going up to the divinity so it's a dreadful strategy he measured the difficulty with the might so he he is a uh, savitri yeah he is inviting savitri okay mm. her might 
with his own laws and dug more deep the gulf that all must cross the gulf when you go from life to death there is a gulf that you have to cross there in fact there is a there's river even in, uh, in western hades, hades yeah, river Styx. yes river sticks yeah yes. or um, in uh, indian uh, uh, mythology also there is the uh, the river that you have to cross vaitarani na that's the word so that's a gulf and he is making it more difficult he is giving a greater challenge to uh, savitri he is dug more deep the gulf that all must cross assailing her div- divinest elements he is challenging her the divinest elements he is attacking her and saying i am going to produce the maximum difficulty for you okay so the transformation of the world and the divinization of the world is not a small thing it's a huge thing so that same is expressing in this language he made her heart kin to the striving human heart her heart is divine but he has brought her heart divine heart down to a human heart that's what he's saying so with a human heart do your work and conquer don't do it with your divine heart it has to be easy but you have to do it with your human heart and so, kin here is allied allied to the human heart yeah he made her heart kin that means he's connecting yes. bringing her down yes. to the striving human heart and forces her strength to its appointed road so do the work that you have to do your appointed road is what the conquest of death you have to challenge me and i am going to put all the difficulties in your path i am going to dig the gulf even deeper and i am challenging you even your divine elements i am challenging you that seems to be the so and force her strength to its appointed road so this is a sentence for this she had accepted mortal breath so she is the divine and she has come down here into the physical world become a mortal and she has accepted the challenge of conquering death to wrestle with the shadow she had come the shadow is death okay so to wrestle with him and fight with him and win okay and must confront the riddle of man's birth the riddle of this world is the dualities that you see you are divine in essence and you have still plunged yourself into the most undivine elements that's a riddle that's a constant problem you have uh, swamdo has a um, a small poem where he describes the tree it's a very small poem he says the tree is aspiring upwards there's a divine element in but its roots are stuck to the ground <laughs> yeah so that's the the to wrestle with the shadow she had come and must confront the riddle of man's birth why has man taken birth at all here that's the riddle and life's brief struggle in dumb matters night now life's brief struggle brief struggle is the span of one life only so this um the the life of a soul is infinite but life on earth is only a brief struggle in dumb matters night here it's only 60 70 80 100 years it's brief compared to the infinity of the soul so that's what he means by life's brief struggle in dumb matters night now the next few lines are he stating the issue what does savitri have to do whether to bear with ignorance and death or hew the ways of immortality to win or lose the godlike game for man was a soul's issue thrown by destiny's dice but not to submit and suffer was she born to lead to deliver was a glorious part we stop here for the time being so this is what she is divine and she has not come here to submit meekly to death she is going to fight and that's the issue 
The line, whether to bear with ignorance, is very Shakespearean. Yes, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's right. Whether to bear with ignorance and doubt, should we accept calmly, quietly, and in a defeatist attitude, whether we should accept ignorance and death, or on the contrary, hew the waves of immortality, conquer death. Should we accept ignorance and death, or should we face and conquer it? That's the issue. And the word hew yeah, is very hew. interesting here. It often means to cut through That's right. something. That's right. Hew can also mean uh, cutting stone. Uh, mostly trees, usually, they would say, <coughs> hew the trees. Yeah. Hew the ways of immortality. To win or lose the godlike game for man. The godlike game. It's a game. <laughs> but for but he man, raises the question, to win or lose. That's right. Again, to, whether to bear with ignorance or hew the ways of immortality. And that is why it is destiny is dice. It could be either way. <laughs> yes, yes. That's why it is. The destiny is dice. So, was a soul's issue thrown with destiny is dice. He is uh, using a very interesting image. It could go either way. <laughs> That's the point. But not to submit and suffer was she born. She has come down with a specific purpose. There is, remember the word, um, appointed road and forced her strength to appointed road. Already her role in the physical world is appointed. She has to do this work. Okay. So, to lead, to deliver was her glorious part. Then the last, the next line we didn't read, but here was no fabric of terrestrial make. She is essentially divine, but she has come down into the physical world, no doubt. But she is made of divine stuff, not of material stuff, not of terrestrial make. Here again, there is an interesting uh, image. Fabric, and she is made of this fabric, which is not terrestrial, it is divine. We read the next passage. Here was no fabric of terrestrial make, fit for a day's use by busy, careless powers, an image fluttering on the screen of fate, half animated for a passing show, or a castaway on the ocean of desire, flung to the eddies in a ruthless sport, and tossed along the gulfs of circumstance, a creature born to bend beneath the yoke, a chattel and a plaything of time's lords, or one more pawn who comes destined to be pushed one slow move forward on a measureless board in the chess play of the earth soul with doom. Such is the human figure drawn by time. A conscious frame was here, a self-born force. Okay. That last line again, Mother has selected for Savitri. A conscious frame was her here, a self-born force. So that's the last line of the passage we have read. So, and, and Sri Aurobindo uses self-born twice also in Savitri. Yeah. That... Uh, that the divine chooses, he's self-born. Yes. He's not born by accident or... Yeah, that's right. Self-born means that you don't depend on anything. Man is born in the physical world. He needs a body. Without a body, he cannot be born. So it is nature that he depends on nature too for his birth in life. But self-born means it is independent and a fundamental... Uh, reality. It doesn't depend on anything else. It is self-born. It creates itself. We have the Sanskrit word for that. Swayam Bhu. It creates itself. So that is the self-born. And he also used the word self-consciousness and he also used the word self-delight. It doesn't depend on anything. It's itself. Depends on itself alone. 
Okay, so. So here was no fabric of terrestrial make. Savitri is essentially divine. She may have come down into the physical world because that's the work that she has to do. What has she to do? Hew the ways of immortality. Change death into eternal life. Here was no fabric of terrestrial make fit for a day's use by busy, careless powers. So, this is... <laughs> so... What is man's? Man is, his body-mind life is a fabric of terrestrial make. Man's body-mind life is terrestrial make, not divine make at all. It is terrestrial make. And it's only fit for a day's use. That's right. And the day is one life. <laughs> That's what he means. Fit for a day by one's, um, fit for a day's use by busy, careless powers. Who are these busy, careless powers? In nature. So again, matter, life, mind. So these are the careless powers. They don't uh, use the body and throw it away. That's it. Nature creates bodies and throws away. Creates bodies and throws away. But what is man? This is a description of man in many, many images. Man is nothing but an image fluttering on the screen of fate. Fluttering <laughs> on the screen of fate. Okay, it's an image fluttering on the screen. <laughs> it's not even a very steady image. Half animated for a passing show. Oh. <laughs> you can see image, screen, passing show. Okay, all this again is an image. It's nothing but an image. Because that tallies perfectly with the Buddhistic philosophy. That your body mind life is nothing but a, an image, an illusion. It's nothing at all. <laughs> And only There's, half alive, half animated. That's right, half anim half animated for a passing show. And that also, the show is there and then it goes away. So long as you live, you have a body. When the body goes, finished, it's gone. Or another image, or a castaway on the ocean of desire. <laughs> Man is nothing but a castaway on the ocean of desire. It means that desire is doing what it wants with him. He has no power over the ocean. Desire can do what he wants with him. Yesterday we were, not yesterday, on Wednesday we read the synthesis and he says that desire is the one that yokes man and whips him and rides on him. If you remember the words. This is what he's saying and the next few lines also tally with that. Or a castaway. Man is just a castaway on the ocean of desire. But this is not what she is. All this is not what she is. A castaway on the ocean of desire. Flung to the eddies of a ruthless sport. So, the ruthless sport is life in the physical world. It's a... F and the eddies. The word eddy is a small whirlpool. So, you are carried away by the ocean and the eddies, the whirlpool. You are not in control of that. This... The desire, the ocean of desire is controlling you and you are just swept away <laughs> and tossed along the gulfs of circumstance. So, circumstances control man. Man doesn't control the circumstances. And what he is, he is using different words here. He is saying tossed along the gulfs of circumstance. There on, in synthesis he says, you are yoked and ridden and whipped by desire. And here he's saying, you are thrown into the sea of desire and you are tossed about helplessly by the whirlpools and everything else. Okay, so. so he uses ocean, eddies, gulfs. That's right. Exactly. Three lines. Yeah. And again now, that's a full stop. So next sentence again. What is man? A creature born to bend beneath the yoke. Okay, he is yoked. What is he yoked by? Nature. Nature is controlling him. His body, mind, life is controlling him. He is not in control of nature. Okay. So, also note the interesting uh, alliteration. Okay, the music. We don't. We have not been stressing too much on the music, but only the words and the meanings and the images. But a creature 
born to bend beneath the yoke the berber sound comes three times we'll see that uh, yeah, uh, i think we alliteration should, we, we again should, and again we'll see and we should do the music yeah, as we'll much as that, possible yeah. a, the music is uh, poetic music is created by the sound effect is a and what is he a chattel chattel and plaything of times lords so man is nothing but a, a what's a chattel it is um a slave movable property as opposed to land immovable property or also it means small possessions that's a chattel you are not something fixed <laughs> Yeah, something very, very dispensable. <laughs> That's what he's saying. And in the next three lines, he tells us what that is. That's right. <laughs> okay. So he's going on using images after images. So now he's saying that you are just something very disposable, and plaything of times, lords. Time is here only in the physical world, and who are the world, the lords here in time? Again, matter, life, mind. So they are controlling you. Okay, so one and another image, or what is man? One more pawn who comes destined to be pushed. <laughs> who is pushing him again? Nature is pushing him. He is not in control at all, and you are nothing but a pawn. You are not even a the chess play. You are not a castle. You are not a king. You are not a knight. You are only a a small pawn. Yes. <laughs> so, in the one slow move forward on a measureless board, the measureless board is the universe. In the chess play of the Earth soul with doom, so such is the human figure drawn by time. This is what man is. Nothing. at all he is not in control he is tossed about and desire is controlling him the universe is controlling him he is very disposable he lives for a brief one life is a brief period for the in the eternity of soul existence that's what he is saying this is man but savitri is not this this is not savitri he has said that very clearly not to submit and suffer was she born and then he explains what man is but to lead to deliver was a glorious part here was no fabric of terrestrial make so she is not an ordinary person he said that and then he describes what an ordinary person is <laughs> okay and such is a human figure drawn by time <laughs> time is the level 1 time is only here time is not there in level 2 level 3 so time when it talks of time it is here and this is what the figure of human being is in time very very disposable <clears throat> then the next line is just one line which mother has selected for painting a conscious frame was here a self born force she is not a chattel she is not a pawn she is not Uh, flung a cast away on the ocean of desire, but she is conscious. Frame was here. Frame, frame again refers to the body mind life. Okay, but she is conscious. Self born force. She is consciousness and force. Chit shakti. So this is description of man and what Savitri is. In this enigma. of the dusk of god this slow and strange uneasy compromise of limiting nature with a limitless soul where all must move between an ordered chance and an uncaring blind necessity too high the fire spiritual dare not blaze if once it met the intense original flame an answering touch might shatter all measures made and earth sink down with the weight of the infinite 
A jail is this immense material world. Across each road stands armed a stone-eyed law. At every gate the huge dim sentinels pace. A gray tribunal of the ignorance, an inquisition of the priests of night, in judgment sit on the adventurous soul, and the dual tables and the karmic norm restrain the titan in us and the god. Pain with its lash, joy with its silver bribe, guard the wheel's circling immobility. A bond is put on the high-climbing mind, a seal on the too large, wide-open heart. Death stays the journeying discoverer, life. Thus is the throne of the inconscient safe, while the tardy coilings of the eons pass and the animal browses in the sacred fence and the gold hawk can cross the skies no more. He is again describing the, in the physical world. In this enigma of the dusk of God, so the physical world is the dusk of God. The dusk is not darkness entire, half light, half, um, half darkness. Dusk, like the evening or the early morning, okay, the dusk of God. And there is an enigma. What is the enigma? A divine has come down into the opposite of what it seems to be divine. That's the enigma. He is telling you also what the enigma is later on. This slow and strange, uneasy compromise. And what is this compromise? Of limiting nature with a limitless soul. This is the enigma. The divine who is all-powerful, all-conscious, all-blissful has come down into the opposite of himself. This is the enigma. It's a mystery. Why is it like that? No. Okay, so. Of limiting nature with a limitless soul. The limitless soul is a purusha and limiting nature is prakriti. So this is the enigma. <laughs> they are both together all the time. Okay where all must move between an ordered chance. Now you have, again Sremdo is using his favorite, oxymorons. Yeah, ordered chance. Ordered chance. Okay, so what is meant by that? There is, in the physical world, if you see, there is an order. There is law. It's very, very clear. But there is also chance. Both are there. And what is the chance? Freedom. And there is law. Law and freedom are opposites. The law is there very clear. A human being will produce only a human being. A, a cat will produce only a cat. There is a law. There is a fixity. So that's the order. There is order and regularity. So there is law. But there is also chance. Because... All the cats are not same. There is a variation. The one and the many. So this is what he means by order, chance. Both are there. There is freedom and there is also fixity and law. Both are there. And an uncaring, blind necessity. So there is an ordered chance and there is also an uncaring, blind necessity which is absolute law. The absolute law, no freedom at all. In the physical world, everything is law. Everything is according to fixed schedules. There is no change. You can predict also what is going to happen. Everything is fixed. That's what I mean by uncaring, blind necessity. It doesn't bother. What has to happen will happen. Uncaring necessity. Too high. The Fire spiritual dare not blaze because it is the, the, the spiritual fire is being restricted from blazing here in the physical world. But if a touch comes from above, he is describing what happens. 
if once it met the intense original flame at the higher side an answering touch might shatter all measures made okay now here again you can see the alliteration an answering touch might shatter all measures made the sound ma is repeated so many times might measures made so although it's very difficult for the spiritual fire to blaze here in the physical world but if once you get a touch of the original flame you might get an answering touch you might be able to and shatter all measures made measures made is again something fixed a measure is something fixed so whatever is fixed can become can be shattered that's what he mean by shatter might shatter all measures made the laws can be broken that's what it means hmm so but the intense original flame is so powerful that if we attempted to answer it it could shatter yeah it could destroy us that's right an answering touch might shatter all measures made and earth sink down with the weight of the infinite a jail is this immense material world now this is a Mm, interesting the english language yes old english language <laughs> g a o l is pronounced jail and g o a l is pronounced goal <laughs> the irregularities of the english language <laughs> but sri arbindo also uses j a i l yes, in yes, savitri yes he does <laughs> so this physical world is a jail there is no freedom that's what it means okay and he has said that there is no freedom the lack of freedom is expressed in so many ways uncaring blind necessity okay measures made and the weight of the infinite all these immense material world all this shows that there is a, no freedom at all here there is a fixity across each road stands armed a stone eyed law so this again is a uh, the stone eyed law stone eyed because it is showing no mercy no compassion no pity nothing at all it's absolutely looking with stone eyes no change <laughs> so it's almost cruel <laughs> mm. that's what it means so <clears throat> and but it's a um stands armed so it's a person almost this law is a person at every gate the huge dim sentinel space who are these huge dim sentinels the inconscient or you can also say death and the lack of fixity of laws they are the sentinels so here in the next lines we have law sentinels tribunal inquisition and yes, judgment that's right oh. so he is using different images all the yes. time now he is using the image a christian image yes a great tribunal of the ignorance this tribunal is a court okay and the inquisition is is a a tribunal appointed by the pope in the by the pope mm. in the 13th century mm -hmm. and what was the purpose to enquire into discover and suppress and punish heresy and unbelief it was famous and notorious for torture that's the inquisition this was there in so if you don't believe what the church is telling you to believe you will be tortured but it's a powerful line when he calls them the priests right. of night yeah a great tribunal of the ignorance an inquisition of the priests of night in judgment sit on the adventurous soul the adventurous soul one who dares to challenge the fixity of ideas and the laws that operate the adventurous soul in judgment sit on the adventurous soul and the dual tables 
of the karmic norm the dual tables are the rewards and punishments that's why he uses the word tribunal and also the inquisition good deeds are rewarded and evil deeds are punished this is the law so this is the of the karmic norm karma is a law that looks like that actually it is not it punishes evil deeds and rewards good deeds so that's the dual tables okay so restrain the titan in us and the god so both this uh, tribunal the great tribunal of the ignorance is doing this work it is controlling the adventurer soul and restrains the titan in us and the god <laughs> both <laughs> keeps you in fixity okay so pain with its lash joy with its silver bribe this is the dual table so he is explaining what the dual tables are pain with its lash joy with its silver bribe again a christian image yeah the that's right the silver bribe of judas yeah. to judas so if you are doing evil deeds your karmic law will punish you with pain and if you are doing good deeds it will give you joy as a silver bribe <laughs> do better i am bribing you <laughs> okay guard the wheels circling immobility now again circling immobility again an oxymoron <laughs> okay so and what is the thing this inquisition and this inquisition and the great tribunal is guarding the wheels circling immobility which is the wheels circling immobility there an uh, the world is supposed to be a sansara it's a cycle of love and uh, of uh, birth and death and there is a continuity in life divine also he speaks of the rhythm of life and everything is rhythmic in life it comes back it comes from the unmanifest goes into manifestation goes back into manifestation everything is revolving you come into life and go back this is the law rhythmic law of the physical world it is cyclical everything is cyclical the sun is going round the, uh, the earth is going round the sun in cycles the comets are also going round in fixed cycles it's an ellipse elliptical movement but everything is regular the seasons come day and night also comes so everything is a, a wheel and this wheel is a circling it's a wheel that is circling but there is no change immobility there is no change is a repetition <laughs> that's what it meant <laughs> okay so a bond is put on the high climbing mind a bond here um means a uh, a restraint a bond also can mean so many other things it can also mean um in uh, economics a bond is something that you uh, yeah it's a a fixed deposit you get a bond okay so but it's not that a bond is put on the high climbing mind it's a restraint yeah it is restrained a seal on the too large wide open heart these are the difficulties of the physical world <laughs> not allowed to have a wide open heart restricted death stays the journeying discoverer life so death is controlling life and not allowing life to become too too much of a discoverer <laughs> and stays here means yeah, holds back that's right holds back okay stays the journeying discoverer life and he has said also earlier in yeah. judgment sits on the adventurous soul so death is not allowing the life to be too much of an adventure that's what he meaning okay so so death stays the journeying discoverer life thus is the throne of the inconscient safe because there has to be a fixity and if death is not there death is not is not it is discouraging 
all effort to escape from this jail. That's what he's saying. So it that stays the journeying, discover a life. Thus is the throne of the inconscient safe. Inconscient cannot be changed very easily. The fixity of the inconscient is safe because the law of death is there. That's what he's saying. Thus is the throne of the inconscient safe. While the tardy coilings of the eons pass, again, you see he has talked of the wheel and the circling immobility mm -hmm. and now he's saying tardy coilings mm -hmm. of the eons pass and the animal browses in the sacred fence and the gold hawk can cross the skies no more. The human soul is often compared to a bird. So the golden hawk is probably, he is referring to the human soul. Namaste all.